to grow your confidence, you have to first be brave and get vulnerable. So I really think until you feel seen as who you really are, you've kind of got walls up. When when you are seen as who you are and you let people see you as who you really are, they all they, they invariably just love what they see because it's true and it's authentic. It's a powerful way to, and it, it does grow your confidence, but it's a terrifying, it's like jumping off a cliff. Welcome to the Connect with Confidence podcast. I am super excited to be having a conversation with Tracy Hewitt. Now, why am I having a conversation with Tracy as my first session for the year? Well, Tracy, welcome. Thank you, Kerry. It's lovely to be here. <laughs> and you might be wondering, why am I the first like podcast guest for the year? Well, well yeah, no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Because I saw, okay, well, I was talking to you in December and it's like, hey, when you've got time for a chat and December can be a little crazy, but I saw your Instagram a few days ago and I just went, okay, I'm just going to see if I can pin Tracy down for a conversation because you have a beautiful, creative, honest, important process to end one year and start another. So I went, let's talk about this. But first of all, before we get into that, I would love people to get to know you a bit. You've just jumped on board for just some kind of an honest conversation with me. So I love that. Thank you for saying yes. Oh, you're welcome. It's it's always good to talk to you. So yeah, how could, how could it, yeah, yeah. What could go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> well, we could like completely lose it in the giggles and have to pull ourselves together. That's, that's one thing that could go wrong, but that'd oh, be fun. Okay. So I'm just trying to think how we connected. It was like through Facebook really, wasn't it? Quite a few years ago now. It's when I had this wild idea that I wanted to write a book and my daughter-in-law had actually been speaking with you and mm. she said, oh, ring Kerry because she will help you. And that was how we connected. And you did indeed help me a great deal. And the book got written and that was in 2015. Wow. The of 2015. Yeah. And yeah. it was just amazing how you, how you did that. And let's go earlier back. So I love that we connected on Facebook because I think how many times have we connected with somebody online and it's turned into something amazing. Now, we still haven't met face to face. You're up we in Queensland. Do you want to tell us kind of where you are, what you're doing? I'm in Theodore, so sort of central Queensland. On My husband is a farmer and we have three grown up sons who are also farmers and cattlemen. And yeah, so we do the farming thing in the middle of a paddock and I think, <laughs> my nana was, sorry Kerry I think farms are pretty big up that way aren't they yeah so we're, we're the we live on 10,000 acres and there's another 17,000 acres over the hill so you know big-ish not as big as some you yeah you could go further and find much bigger but it keeps us busy and the boys all work with us and um yeah so yeah it's busy I, I'm responsible for admin and bookkeeping and all sorts of fun stuff for the property so mm. that keeps me on my toes and yeah to keep me sane I spend time in my studio writing and painting painting mostly these days but there's a lot of writing still too yeah that's fantastic because I you just have an amazing way with words I love it but just back to the size of the farm for, for um, a bit of context how long would it take you to drive from one side to the other Oh, that's a really good question. 15 minutes, I guess, from, from this. But to, to drive between farms, it's probably half an hour one way. Okay. Yeah. Half an hour. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And so do you gather sheep or cattle with the help of horses or motorbikes or yes. helicopters? Or, or some helicopters, some helicopters, but all, all horses, all done with horses. Our terrain is a little bit, you know, hilly and whatever, so... It's, um, yeah, they're not fans of motorbikes here. The, the countryside lends itself better to horses than bikes. And we've wow. got a couple, yeah, who are pretty keen on their horses. So, oh, that's cool. Yeah. So and it would I, take a bit longer for a horse to get from one end of the farm to the other. Yeah. Well, they, ta they, they truck them to wherever, whatever paddock they need to be in. They'll just load the horses on the truck, take the truck to the paddock and oh, do nice. what's got to be done. So, yeah, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't take out forever. Okay, cool. So a little different to the farm I grew up on. Perhaps. Yeah. The, the only helicopters that would come to the farm would be for 
you know, skydiving fun or something. Uh, moving right along. So you have a studio and you're doing amazing artwork and writing. And mm-hmm. so over the past, uh, so five or six years since I've known you, you've been connecting more online with, I would say, a global community, I'm guessing. It, it's, it is, actually, yes, yes. So that um, is really curious to me. It, it kind of blows my mind, but thank goodness for the internet. It, it, it sort of, it's given me a whole lot of opportunities to connect with people anywhere and everywhere. And I, I, have, I currently have a monthly, actually it's not even monthly, it's twice a month, little group that gets together on zoom and we make art together That's nice. and um there are yeah girls from the u.s we had a lady from new zealand join in at one point and yeah so so yeah we're all spread all over and we can all just kind of hang out together on the little screen yeah. so I love that. where you are in the world you can fun things yeah, and it's so beautiful to be able to connect with people from different countries. I think we learn so much and, you know, expand our worldview. So I'd love to hear about connecting online and things that you've been learning about connection, like in the last five years or so. But also maybe let's go back to a much younger Tracy. Have you grown up mm. being, I mean, we connected immediately. I just felt like as soon as we talked on the phone, we're just going to get on like a house on fire to use, I don't know where that expression comes from, but hopefully that lands globally. But we just got on so well. <laughs> we did. So have you always been confident to connect with people? Have you been the one to start a conversation or have you left it to others? Not really, not really. I'm by nature an introvert. I kind of, you know, I'm very happy with my own company. And yeah, as a, particularly as a younger person, I was very just quiet, reserved. I've always enjoyed, pe- I find people fascinating. I love hearing people's stories. So I guess, you know, a curiosity about other people helps. And, you know, I, I, I guess I learned that to make your way in the world, and, you know, and, and kind of make connections if you ask some questions and get people talking about themselves. That was way more comfortable for me than telling people about myself. So I learned to do that probably, you know, as a, as a very, as a youngish person, I guess. Yeah. So where did you go to school and grow up? I grew up in Brisbane and went to the state school up the road and, um, and then went off to the high school, you know, a bus trip away. Um, and yeah, yeah, school days weren't my happy favouritest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, being a teenager is just sort of not all it's cracked up to be, I don't think. I, yeah, I, I have no ambition to go back and relive those days. It, you know, it, it wasn't torturous, it wasn't awful, but I certainly wasn't comfortable in my own skin and I was not confident at all. And, yeah. you know, that's come over. Yeah, over time and finding sort of, I guess, you know, as you find your own voice and you, you know, you find your own way to be in the world and you, you know, and you, well, you guess you get the confidence to be who you really are instead of who you, who the world tells you you should be or who you think the world wants you to be. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, mm-hmm. I, and I realise that there's, there's, well, there's so much that I don't know about you. <laughs> So the questions that occur to me is, so to, to be on a farm, you know, in a reasonably remote place, uh, how far from Brisbane are you now? Seven hours in the car. Right, okay. Yeah, so we haven't been here. Yeah, so a fair yeah. way, a fair yeah. way. So I'm wondering, did you have a career after school before you met your husband? or And, and then I'm like, oh, everyone loves a love story. So tell us, how did you meet your husband? <laughs> okay, so... I was on my school holidays or about to go on to school holidays between grade 11 and grade 12. And my uncle at the time was a doctor in this tiny little town and his receptionist was going on holidays in the school holidays. So his wife had kids at home and they were in a bit of a fix and they said, oh, you know, do you want to come and have a holiday job? Yeah, sure. So I was 16 and came out to work for my uncle who was the doctor. And I think, I, I don't know if it was the first day or the second day, this young man came in for an appointment with the doctor and, you know, he sort of seemed quite nice and 
couple of days later, he rang up and asked me to the movies and that was nice. And I found out later that his mum and my uncles, what my auntie, were quite good friends. And Kate, my auntie, had asked his mum whether I, he might take me out and introduce me to some young people. And apparently he sort of said, well, he would do that. But first he had to make sure that I didn't have three heads and, you yeah. know, who knows what. <laughs> So that he manufactured uh, an excuse to come to the doctor. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, so, so, yes, we went out. And I have to tell you that it was a very long time before he actually introduced me to any other young people. <laughs> ah, he was just enjoying your company himself. Yes, yes. So, yeah, we, um, we did sort of the long-distance romance between oh. Theodore and Brisbane for I guess it was about three years yeah lots of weekend trips up and back on the bus and yes I was married and I say I like to tell people I was not quite 19 because it sounds better than saying I was 18 when I got married <laughs> but anyway um we were young and I you know when I look back now and I looked at my kids as they were at that age I was like oh no that was really a bad idea <laughs> I was very young, but we, I guess we grew up together yeah. and well, we're still here. I, you know, we, we haven't kind of headed in different directions yet. So. Wow. Um, and how long have you been married now? Um, 38 years. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you. It is a bit of an achievement, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> That's so cute. Was he nervous when he went in or was he feeling comfortable because there was the pretense of an appointment? Uh, yeah, I'm not too sure. <laughs> he didn't seem nervous. He didn't seem nervous. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to ask him about that later. <laughs> yeah. uh, I might, yes. Yeah, that's cool. So now, now you're connecting with people online. Um, what's been like the easiest, most natural, joyful connecting and what's been really stretching you and getting you out of your comfort zone? What a good question. Um Gosh, the, the easy, joyful part, and this is probably a bit of a paradox, I did a writing course in 2017, which is where I connected with a lot of the people that you know I'm still kind of connected to. And it was, a, um, it was called Writing to Light. And it was a really deep dive into, you know, a lot of very philosophical sort of stuff. And one of the assignments was to write about an, an experience. They, it was called in the writing into the abyss. So like that experience that was like an abyss, that terrible grief, that, you know, one of those really big calamities in your life, I guess. And there was a Facebook group that sort of grew up out of this writing cohort. And, I think because we all kind of, you know, we all kind of dug into this really painful place and then dredged, the assignment was to write a letter to someone. So if imagine you were walking out of the cave as someone was walking into it. So, you know, you've had processed this experience. You've gained hopefully some wisdom. You're going to write a note and leave it there for this person walking in fresh and raw. So, and then we all shared our, you know, these pieces of writing. So we each had a real insight into one another's, you know, history. And, but I, yeah, I don't know. It's really hard to explain in five minutes or less. <laughs> but there was this community grew up and it was a very safe community. It was a closed group. And some of the conversations there were incredibly deep and profound and, you know, real and raw. And yet it was really easy and really joyful. And I think it it was because it was such a safe container and there was so much value and respect in that in that group. So I think the the quality of the space that you're in, the group you're in and the and the safety is really important. Yeah, and the and the stretching places. Oh, stretching is has got to be like being on video. I think that's the most uncomfortable thing that yeah, having people looking at you, feeling like a real idiot, <laughs> falling over your words, a bit like I'm doing now. <laughs> no, not at all. So, yeah. And, well, <laughs> I 
judge ourselves more harshly than other people, don't we? I think True. so many times I've seen someone's video and I've thought, that was amazing what they said. And then they might say, oh, I didn't look very good or I had, you know, bad hair day or whatever. It's like, yeah, I totally missed that. I just appreciated um, yeah. what you were saying. And, you know, mm-hmm. I had to remember that myself too. Yeah. And I think we re- we respond to the energy that somebody brings. It's where we stop looking and seeing the physical form really quickly when there's a when there's a really clean, pure energy and it's a well intentioned energy. You feel that, and I think yeah. that's what we can do. Yes, because we don't know that somebody might have expectations on themselves to have like their hair all in place. If we are yep. seeing somebody whose hair is everywhere, when we just accept people as they are generally. Okay. Oh. Mm, mm. <laughs> so much more than we expect other people to <laughs> so we have yes, accept us exactly exactly we have some very interesting mm. conversations in our head and we're judging ourselves oh, yeah. terrible conversations in our head mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay this, this brings us to muriel um do you mind if we talk about muriel for a moment very happy to talk about muriel she's one of my favorite things to talk about <laughs> So, Tracy, can I just take you back to uh, when we started coaching and you had this amazing insight. You said, and this is a story that I've told people before, so I know I've I've got your permission previously to share this, Mm -hmm. although now we actually know who it is that had this conversation. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. (laughs) And I still remember where I was when I got your text message later that day. So we did this session and you you realised, like, oh my gosh, there's this book in me. And so you committed, you'd already committed to the coaching program and you had, you know, creative things on the boil and but it was this book that came alive. You declared it, you went, okay, I'm doing this. And uh, very inspiring session. And then I'm downtown later with, um, I'm, I'm thinking either my husband or another client who went to that same cafe with. And your text message said something like, Muriel has been running around in my head screaming, no, don't do it. Stay small. And I said, not today, Muriel. (laughs) I loved that you named that, you know, inner critic Muriel, that one, that that part of you that wants to, you know, keep you small and quiet and not putting yourself out there. And you spoke very sternly to her and put her in her place. And I said, no. I did. I did. Mm. I've since discovered that actually an even better way, like speaking sternly to her worked quite well, but I've discovered that an even better way to deal with that voice is to fluff it up and Mm -hmm. reassure it and make it better. I actually created a whole art journaling course based around it and we go through like creating an identity, really sort of, you know, describing what this voice looks like and what it sounds like and what this person giving it a whole persona because when you when you give it a persona external to yourself it actually gives you a little bit of space a little bit of room between you and that voice that allows you to sort of recognize it for the bullshit that it is yeah and and if you yeah and and I found if you sort of say oh you know she likes a cup of tea and 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 she likes someone to do her hair and and she really loves to go and sit out under the tree and read a nice book so she say, like, okay Muriel what are you worried about let me I've got this you know today I'm okay I don't need you but let's take you outside and give you a little foot rub and fluff your hair up and here's a book I'll bring you a cup of tea and just stay there I'm good I've got this today and yeah, you can get way more mileage out of that than you can out of get back in the corner and go back to baking your bickies, <laughs> which I told her plenty of times while I was writing that book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember that. Oh, That's right. Yeah, and it sounds like there's more room for empathy for yourself if you... It is. It sounds like there's yes. empathy for Muriel. It's like, yeah, I know you're scared. You want to, you know, keep me safe. Keep me from doing this me so brave creative. All that, all that voice, yeah, that's all that voice is doing is trying to keep you safe. Yeah. And if you can acknowledge that and reassure it, um, you can carry on. Yeah, that's right. Like, yeah. Because this is, yeah, this mm. is our brain. It, it, 
it's on the lookout for all the potential disasters and going, no, don't do that. No, don't talk to that person. It could go wrong. It could get ugly. Whew, just, you know, steer clear. Just keep your head down. Just yeah. keep looking at the floor or looking at your mobile phone. Don't look up. Don't just make eye contact. <laughs> and you go, exactly. thanks for trying to keep me safe, but uh, we're going to step forward here because there's yeah. all this world of possibilities. So, and that's what I see you as doing, not only creating a world of possibilities for yourself and your mum, is it your mum or your mother-in-law that has been doing some things? My gorgeous mum, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you've been, you know, getting her connecting with the world with her beautiful jewellery and putting that online. Uh, so that is amazing. Yes. But, yeah. but it goes so far beyond as you have people doing your courses from around the world and giving them a voice and a creative expression. Uh, so that's really powerful, Tracy. Cool. It's Love very it. rewarding too. Yeah. Love it. So, um, well, that brings me to, you know, the, the reason for the timing to have this conversation with you now, because I saw no. you did some mm. art journaling to complete on 2020 and to, you know, step into 2021. So do you want to talk us through that? I would love to hear more. Okay. So, um, yeah, I have it. I don't do it every year and I really should. I think I will from now on, but Essentially, the, the process is art journal, two pages, open like an open spread. On one side of the spread, I will write down all the things that I am very happy to be saying goodbye to, that the year delivered that I didn't particularly enjoy and that I'm ready to be free from. <laughs> and there was a lot this year, and I think everybody, like, you know, if you needed four pages, well, go do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, but write down all that that you just want to let go of and then you just make art over the top of it and you obliterate it. You actually, you make it disappear. And there's something incredibly powerful and I don't even know. Yeah, it's it's transformative, I think, is the right word. You, It's better than therapy <laughs> and you don't have to talk your way through it. You just write and you make art and it's in the making and the physical movement and it transmutes things, I think. Mm. So that on one side and on the other side, because every dark side has a light side. And so, you know, it's important, I think, to also acknowledge what was good and there were good things. So yeah. on the other side, I kind of, you know, I'll write those down and then it's a, you know, a light, happy page. And maybe I won't even cover much of that up and maybe the favourite parts I'll actually rewrite back over the top or whatever you know there's just whatever you feel like doing in the in the moment but you can collage you can paint you can it, it, it works for anything but the idea of writing something down and then covering it up and obliterating that awful stuff just mm. it just frees you up to kind of carry on mm. and if you want to you could then make intentions on another page but that's a whole other thing so you can make what on the other page like another page with you sort of your intentions and your goals and you how you want to move forward yeah that would be another thing you can do too mm. that's cool people can go and have a look at your website or your um instagram to to see this and we'll put the links in the show notes um but just talk to us about some of the the stuff that you're using the textures the paints or um what do you do? yes okay so because so, some people might not be familiar with art journaling so yes I'm, yeah, I'm with you so I the writing I do with just a colored pencil and then I used a like a serviette a napkin you know printed the pretty ones that you get there's so many lovely patterns and designs and stuff if you peel them apart a bit you can get a very fine layer of tissue which you can paint down with a bit of matte medium gluey sort of stuff and then you can put acrylic paint over, pens over, rubber stamps. I think, yeah, paint and pens were what I use mostly, acrylic paint and pens. Cool. And, um, maybe to, and yeah, the, the napkin-y thing. I feel inspired to, I've got some acrylic paints, but I think I might have to do something. And, yeah, oh, good. you've reminded me of a couple of art moments. So I know that a lot of people listening might be judging their art selves already or their yeah. lack of you know artistic talent um Please. when i was yeah. sorry 
please don't do that. <laughs> please don't judge your art self badly. <laughs> yeah. But we understand if you do. And, uh, yeah, and I think the way to overcome it is just to have a go, isn't it, and play. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, when, so I'd never done yeah. any art classes or anything. Um, I'd, I'd love to do an art journaling class with you online at some point. Yeah, so if you've got any coming up soon, now's probably the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. So yeah. when I was really sick, um, I went through chronic burnout and fatigue and I couldn't really do much, couldn't leave the house. I just had to go to bed every half hour. Um, mm. So, well, I just was sleeping 20 hours a day, but I just needed something creative. And we bought this house that had like the original back wall. It was beautiful old double brick house. and that added on to the house in later years and put this cupboard in what was the original back window. And so this cupboard was like brown wood and brown glass. And it was just awful to look at. <laughs> so here's this beautiful house. We, um, we sanded the floorboards. It was magnificent, but there's this big, ugly, you know, window frame size brownness. And so I went to Spotlight. I got fabric like canvas and then stapled it right around it and it was still hanging down the bottom for a while but it's like the lounge is in front of it so you can't even see that the fabric's just hanging at the bottom <laughs> and I just got like paint and my hands and a sponge and, and I just kind of like did this light blue getting to darker blue and it just was like waves and it just was like kind of nothing and I did try and put some words in it and I know the word hope still kind of shows through a little bit uh, it's still there in that house. And um, and I remember a neighbour, a teenager, she came over and she just went, oh, Carrie, I just want to dive right in. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow. You know, because I judged it, but I just thought, but it's better than the brown, <laughs> brown <laughs> ugly glass and wood. <laughs> How good did it feel to, to get your hands in that paint? Yeah, and just to accomplish something. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, it did feel really good. And, you know, since then I've done a few art classes and just, you know, dabbled with a few different mm -hmm. things. But I actually just love, you know, acrylic paint on canvas with my fingers. Like it's, probably it's, because I felt like I, I don't know how to use a paintbrush and actually make things, waves look like waves and all the rest of it. Although I've learned a few tricks now. But uh, just just paint on your fingers. It's quite fun. It's it's wonderful. It really, yeah. yeah. And it. And I, I sort of always say to people, it's the process, not the product that yes. matters. That's where the juice is. I yeah. mean, the product's important, you know, if you want to put it into an art gallery or, you know, you consider yourself an artist for sure. But it's the process that is just so valuable and it can yes. be valuable to anybody and the product can be like really just you know, I mean, you can look at it in the finish and go, well, that's just crap, but it won't be because you've had this experience of making it and that is really important and yes. useful and helpful and health giving. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I've done a process every year and I agree with you, it is about the process and I've got so many blogs and at, at the end of 2020, I was like, we, we had a house full of family, there was so much going on and I'm like, I really want to get a blog out before Christmas and then I just went, Take the pressure off yourself, girl. It's going to be a better blog after Christmas. Mm -hmm. So I completed it and, and put it up New Year's Eve, I think. It's probably a dreadful time to be emailing people because they're like, you know what? I'm going to unsubscribe to a whole bunch of stuff this year. <laughs> but anyway, they didn't actually. Well, you know you've got the people who want to be there then. Only, only one unsubscribe. And it was somebody that I went, you actually will be super excited about my next email that I'm sending out. <laughs> So it sucks to be you. <laughs> like, but I know that person and I can say, I totally get that you just need to declutter your in inbox. Um, yep. but you'll, you'll love what I've got coming up. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I just went, I have to just share this. And my process this year was really about looking for the gifts in 2020 because, mm -hmm. yeah, we so we so easily just want to slam the door shut on the previous year. And like you said, like say goodbye to all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, we also want to go, what do we want to hang on to? What's the gold in that year? Mm -hmm. And um, that's Absolutely. a pretty powerful process. So, and I've kept myself to writing that process. You know, a few years ago, I did have a map of Australia. It was uh, probably 2013, 2012, maybe. And I went all over Australia. And so I just printed out the map and then I put people's names on it, like all around Australia, where I went and, just recorded beautiful moments but that's probably the only artistic thing I've really done 
in the last like 16 years since I've been coaching. Uh, generally, it's just journaling, answering questions that I propose, like in my blogs and everything. Uh, but I just think to, yeah, just play. I'm just, <laughs> you can see Tracy. <laughs> People listening are just like, what is she doing right now? I'm just kind of waving my fingers around. It's just the, getting your fingers into something and doing something. Paint under your fingernails. Yep. Yep. Good feeling. And I'll paint my fingernails properly afterwards. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I think it's time to make some mess um, because you do find clarity in it, don't you? You do. You really do. Mm. So what's been um, really rewarding for you in terms of feedback that you get from people after doing your classes or watching what you do? Um, oh, all sorts of things. Um, you know, increased confidence. Um I'm just trying to think. I know oh, somebody sent me a lovely message just the other day um, about about the the sense of guardianship that they felt that I offered them, which was really beautiful because that's not sort of necessarily something I'm consciously trying to do. But so that was really special. Mm. Um, yeah, and you know, yeah. Just yeah, confidence, enjoy, you know, enjoyment, satisfaction in actually being able to do things they didn't think they could do, mm. and certainly the people who've done the my making friends with Muriel course, yeah, yeah, of course about Muriel, just find that that relationship with themselves is so much better and kinder, and you know their their capacity for self compassion has expanded. So that's, mm. that's fantastic. That is powerful, Tracy, and I feel mm. like empathy, you know, is my word for 2020. You know, like it's something that I grew in and when we expand in our own self-compassion, empathy for ourselves, then we have more capacity to give that to others and to have empathy and compassion for others. So, you know, I just feel like that's really timely and powerful work that you're doing. So I'm so excited to hear about that. And, of course, this is the Connect with Confidence podcast and, uh, you know, we talk about all all different aspects of connection and confidence um so you said that people have an experience of growing in confidence by by working with you so if they were to say you know well i'm just going to say it you know what are your top three tips for growing in confidence Ooh, that's a good question what are my top three tips? um my first one would be to to develop that compassionate relationship with that voice in your head that would be the top of the list. Excellent. Um, growing your confidence. Goodness me, put me on the spot here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's such a compliment when somebody says to me, what a great question. Because <laughs> yeah, it's and a that's the second time you've said that today. So you've made my day. You're doing well. You're doing well. Um, confidence. I think to grow your confidence, you have to first be brave and get vulnerable. Yeah. I really think until you feel seen as who you really are, you've kind of got walls up and what am I, you know, do you sort of get a sense of what I'm trying to say? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, when, when, when you are seen as who you are and you let people see you as who you really are, they all, they, they invariably just love what they see because it's true and it's authentic. And yes, yeah, and, and that it's a powerful way to, and it, it does grow your confidence, but it's a terrifying, it's like jumping off a cliff. <laughs> yes, and that's terrifying, but how do you feel after you've landed? Exactly, you exactly. You know, jumping. Yeah, that just survived. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's like, wow, you know, that's awesome. And, and the more you do that, every time you do it, it becomes easier and, and the braver you are. Yeah, the braver you are, the more vulnerable you let yourself be, yeah. the more confident you become. Yeah. Cool. Okay. okay. So be yeah. kind to yourself. Yep. Be brave and get vulnerable. Okay. And three, three things for building confidence. Um, yeah, look, learn something new. Yeah, yeah. Learn, yeah. yeah learn. I think that's a good thing. Learn something new and get, put a little bit of time into mastering something or or even just getting a little bit better at something every time you grow in your skill a little bit that um yeah that makes you feel a little bit more confident so yeah invest invest in yourself invest in your own development there you go 
we wow, got that's beautiful. Yeah. Well, we've got four beautiful things. Be kind to yourself, be brave and get vulnerable, learn something new and invest in yourself. Yeah, which is which yeah. has been done since I've known you. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> that's beautiful. We could just about wrap up there because I think that's that's profound and beautiful and I'm inspired to go and do some art journaling. Um, is, is there anything else that you would like to add in terms of or anything that we've talked about today or your intentions for 2021? Um, I don't necessarily think so. I mentioned to Kerry before we started talking that my I've decided my word for the year is ease. When I was reviewing 2020, mm. the word hard came up again and again and again and again and again and again and again. Yeah. And so, yes, I my intention for 2021 is to live with ease and grace. Oh, that's beautiful. So that's what I'm looking for, ease and grace. Yeah. I don't think that I can't think of anything else. Well, I'll think of something in 10 minutes maybe. But, no, it's been so much fun talking to you, though. Yeah, Tracy, as you were saying that about, um, you know, how you just saw the word hard, hard, hard coming up in your 2020 review and, uh, and I just saw as you started talking about ease and grace, I was just picturing like last year, this time last year we were in North Queensland. Uh, we went from Townsville up to Cairns and we went to, uh, what's it called? Okay, so there were boulders and there was this river, something gorge, or um, no, not Karanda, no, no, but near that we did go to Karanda Railway. Yes, um, Mossman. Ah, Mossman River Gorge. Yes, yeah. So I just saw how the water just flows over and around the rocks, and there's just this ease. ease. And I tell you what, it was beautiful. Mm. So. Yeah. Yeah. May you have a beautiful year of ease and grace. Yeah. And when the boulders show up, you're just going to be like water around them. Just stay in flow, Tracy. That's what I'm wanting to do, Kerry. May it be that way for all of us. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Those boulders do show up, but the way we respond to them, it's either like pushing against the hardness or going, how do we do this? Let's just. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Wow. Love Let's it. Do it. Bashing our heads on the rocks. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Our inner Muriel or inner critic might have us do that, but uh, yes, we but we're not going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep building that mental fitness and uh, that um, compassion for ourselves. I think that's uh, absolutely huge. So, thank you again for your time, Tracy, and thank you, dear listeners, for joining us for this conversation. And uh, there's plenty more honest, beautiful conversations on the Connect with Confidence channel, and there are a whole lot more coming up. And in fact, Tracy, can I share? Yeah. And everyone who's listening, and <laughs> share what's coming up. So, there is a new book on the horizon. We're kind of getting to the finishing touches. I don't think I've told you this, have I, Tracy? Oh, okay, so it's <laughs> exciting. News to, to everyone here. So I am going to be doing a few interviews with people who have contributed to the book and it is about um, being kind to yourself and being kind to others. Um, yes. It's called How to Talk to Strangers to Decrease Anxiety, to Build Confidence and Make a Bigger Difference in the World. Oh, wow. Wonderful. So we have some great cool. conversations coming up there. Yeah, about that. Yeah, terrific. It's exciting. You know, this is what we need to, to do. And uh, strangers can be the person sitting on the other end of the lounge. <laughs> that, um, <laughs> sometimes a stranger can be inside your own skull too. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Sometimes we surprise ourselves. We need to get, continue <laughs> to get to know ourselves. So, uh, yeah, it's all of that and more. So I look forward to sharing that too. And um yeah, let's jump into Tracy's social media and uh, website and check that out too because there's a lot of beautiful inspiration there. So that can help us to connect with confidence, to connect with ourselves and with others and make a bigger difference. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, everyone, thank for listening. You, wow, friends, thank you for listening to that. Uh, I just love a conversation with Tracy. I'm sure you can sense her honesty and courage and uh, I just love how she showed up today. So... Her book, we talked about it, but we didn't actually mention the title and it is When Your Superpower Becomes Your Kryptonite. So I'm sure you'll find that on Tracy's website as well. So enjoy and until next time, 
go do talk to strangers, connect with confidence and uh, just be you. Go connect with yourself more. And here's to an amazing, authentic, powerful 2021.